trading underway on Wall Street. Just a couple moments ago, it started as investors react to another solid jobs report. The U.S. economy adding 225,000 jobs in January. Unemployment ticking up slightly to 3.6%. Joining us now is White House Trade Advisor Peter Navarro, one of the president's economic advisors. Peter, thanks for joining us. Yeah, great to be with you. Good to be with you. Let's get some fresh reaction, first of all, to that jobs report. My understanding of why the uh, unemployment rate ticked up slightly is that we have people flooding the jobs market. Is that true? Truly extraordinary. Uh, millions of people uh, have come into the job market. Those discouraged workers that were on the couch during the old Biden years, uh, they're coming back. And uh, the labor force participation rate uh, bumped up, um, and that's really important. The, the untold story, Ed, about this, uh, this number, though, is the president's one job at a time approach. You know, you talk about macro stuff like deregulation, tax mm -hmm. cuts. That's been a great driver for the economy. But the president also takes it from a micro point. It's shipyards in Philly, Marinette, Wisconsin, Panama City. It's combat vehicle plants in places like Lima, Ohio, York, Pennsylvania. It's an F-16 production line in Greenville, South Carolina. These are things that all happen because President Donald J. Trump focuses on job creation every day. And we're seeing the fruits of that, and it's a beautiful thing. Talk about the trade deficit, because the recent report we had suggesting it had narrowed for the first time in six years. This president uh, had that victory on USMCA, obviously, uh, phase one on the, on the China trade deal. Talk about uh, the road ahead. Well, the, the it's truly extraordinary. Uh, the president promised uh, they would get the trade deficit down. It takes a while to do that. But the reason why he focuses on the trade deficit is that when that trade deficit goes down, our growth goes up. Our real GDP got a full point of growth from that reduction um, in the trade deficit. And why does it matter? It's because jobs come home. The jobs are here. So he's going to keep focus on that. It's, it's really a testament to his tariff policy as well as his tough trade policies. The other thing that, that was good news this week that really helped propel the markets was what they call the ISM Manufacturing Index. And it was above 50 again. And when it's above 50, it's a 0 to 100 index. That means the economy's robust and expanding. So uh, all these numbers are, are good, but they are a reflection of this uh, yeah. uh, one job at a time approach by the president, fair trade to reduce our trade deficit, focus on manufacturing. We've had over 500,000 sure. manufacturing jobs created. So this is a, it's a beautiful thing but here in America. Peter, despite Blue all the boom, as the president says, he talked about the boom in the State of the Union. And yet, despite the good news, we showed the Dow a moment ago. I know it can go up and down on any given day, but big picture, it's been mostly up. But you see it down, even though we have this good jobs number. There's been concerns on Wall Street, as you know, about the coronavirus. The president had a phone call last night with the president sure. of China, President Xi. I'll quickly recap uh, the statement from the White House today. The president spoke with President Xi. The president expressed confidence in China's strength and resilience in confronting the challenge of the 2019 coronavirus outbreak. Why does the White House have such confidence in China when a lot of critics around the world have been quite critical of China's response? Well, the president is always uh, optimistic with world leaders and trying to encourage them uh, to do uh, things that needed need to be done. And it's really important uh, for China to contain that virus uh, within the boundaries of China and to, and to stop uh, its contagion and expansion. And so I think what the president was simply offering there uh, was a hand of friendship. I, it's really important, uh, Ed, that we get our CDC personnel on the ground there mm -hmm. to help. Uh, that's, that's, we're trying to get that done. We need to find out more about what's going on there. But I would say that President Trump acted very decisively and quickly when, we, when he stopped the flights coming in from China. That was our first line of defense. Yeah. Uh, so let's see what happens. But this is as uh, very serious in that uh, previous segment you had. I mean, that's gripping TV, talking to those individuals, because that really brings it home. Yeah, and what is the president doing? You heard that direct message from the two passengers from America. I know he can't save everybody all at once. There have been planes coming home, uh, as you note. Uh, but talk about the White House response to make sure that every American that is in, in danger can get back to America safely. Sure. Uh, we have uh, top people on uh, a task force. Uh, Secretary Azar is leading that, but you've got Ken Cuccinelli as well over at DHS. Robert O'Brien is the national security advisor. 
uh, and we, we need to look at this uh, full, for the full range uh, of options in order to be ready um, in case uh, that reaches our shores in any significant numbers. So we are working on that every day in the most serious way. Uh, and uh, to be pre prepared for uh, any crisis that might emerge. Absolutely, a big story. Finally, Peter, uh, it appears that you're in some kind of a feud, at least that's the way it's being reported, <laughs> uh, with Jeff Bezos, who of course runs uh, Amazon, among other deals, and, and it appears that you uh, met up with him at the Alfalfa Club dinner, approached him at a cocktail party and said you wanted uh, to meet with him, and he sort of brushed you off and said uh, that you could meet with lesser officials at, at Amazon. He's now gone on Instagram uh, and, yeah. and and, and sort of you know mocked you, teased you about this a little bit. And Amazon's put out this statement. Senior Amazon executives met with administration officials, including Mr. Navarro, on multiple occasions to discuss our shared goal of combating counterfeit goods on Amazon. We are eager to continue this collaboration and will make our executives available to meet as often as necessary to effectively address the issue. What do you want to talk to them about? Sure. Um we have a huge problem with counterfeits coming into this country. Uh, I've been running an operation with Customs and Border Protection for the last six months uh, that show that as much as 10% of the products coming in from China by air are contraband. Half of it's counterfeits. Uh, the other half are things like controlled substances, including fentanyl. It's stuff really that can harm or kill Americans mm -hmm. and certainly defraud them. Uh, E-commerce. Uh, is a big enabler of that. Uh, Amazon, Shopify, JD.com, Alibaba. Um, I've been working on this. We came out with an action plan 10 days ago with the Department of Health. Yeah. Uh, and, and we also came out with an executive order last week, which is going to essentially crack down on the e-commerce platforms and others if they will not take their responsibility and help solve this problem. So I've been talking right. to executives from all of the companies. Uh, Bezos, I met him on Saturday night. He said he'd meet <laughs> with me, told me to call Jay Carney. I called him, and uh, now they're, they're backtracking. And uh, I think it's a shame that Amazon is the great enabler of counterfeiting, mm -hmm. won't accept its responsibility. It simply tells you, oh, we're spending a bunch of money, yeah. we're going to take care of it. It's getting worse. Well, shame on Jeff Bezos. The president's been quite critical of Bezos. So that might have something to do with this, but hopefully you and he will sit down. Not and we'll, at all. We'll, we'll yeah, this, this is about counterfeiting. Yeah, big issue indeed. Peter Navarro, appreciate you coming in.